Before we begin the program, here's a few notes. Securities offered through registered representatives of Cambridge Investment Research, Inc., a broker-dealer member FINRA, SIPC. Investment advisory services offered through Cambridge Investment Research Advisors, a registered investment advisor. TechGirl Financial and Cambridge Investment Research, Inc. are not affiliated companies. Discussions in the show should not be construed as specific recommendations or investment advice. Always consult with your investment professional before making important investment decisions. What will you do when your money works for you? Welcome to the Tech Girl Financial Podcast with your hosts, Victor and Kim Gaxiola. From the home office in California, here is Victor and Kim. Welcome back to the Tech Girl Financial Podcast. Yeah, welcome. It is so good to be here again in the studio. And today's topic, our favorite topic, is restricted stock units. Oh, is this your favorite topic? I have so many. I know I you guess. do. I know. Uh, I'm sorry. What, this is your number one for now. It is at <laughs> least today. for today's podcast, right? <laughs> yeah. On episode, what episode number is this? Well, I, you know, I don't know. I don't know where it's going to fall. But the thing is that this is an area of focus. And for those of you who may not be familiar, although you probably wouldn't be listening to this podcast if you weren't, but RSUs, restricted stock units, definitely a big, huge component in the compensation package that a lot of employees, especially here in Silicon Valley who work in tech, get as part of their overall incentive. You know, it's it, many companies use RSU, RSUs as a way to kind of recruit or to make an offer very enticing. Absolutely. And to make your salary even more lucrative. And so uh, that is one of the things that, oh man, to work in a tech company, it's probably the only thing that would want me, (laughs) want to make me work in a tech company is that restricted stock unit uh, compensation, right? Yeah. And so when we talk about (laughs) restricted stock unit compensation, just to be clear, you know, and just to set a, a foundation here, it's usually they'll grant you a certain amount of your company shares. Uh, there is a vesting period. So in one way, it's, a, it's an incentive for you to stick around, right? The so golden you need to, handcuff. Yeah, you need to reach a certain level of employment status, you know, either a year, two years, three years, or that allocation could be vesting over a specific calendar. And so it encourages people to stay there because in order for you to maximize that benefit, you want to be there and get your RSUs. Yeah, and it's a double-edged sword. You know, we I just had that conversation this past week with a client in talking about the golden handcuff. It's so great to get them, but now more than ever as we enter into a slower period in the economy and um, the tech world in general, um, in, in compensation especially, Um, we need to think about that now more than ever, it's going to be, if you want to jump ship, is it worth your while if you're not going to get the same amount of RSU compensation at your next company? So really, um, this brings to light the idea of number one, you have to protect this wealth that you've been given. And number two, think about your future and may not maybe just plan it as a big bonus but a bonus, like an old school bonus, where mm-hmm. it's very uncertain you're going to get this in the future. Yeah. And so a lot of people will make that decision based on their confidence in their own company. You know, if they feel that their company is doing well, producing a great product or providing a service and they see the trajectory of the company so that if they are bullish about where it's headed, they say, yeah, absolutely. I'm going to stick around because it's likely that that restricted stock unit and when I exercise will be worth, you know, more than it is today. Yeah. Uh, So, yeah, I can see where it's it's something where, you know, people need to make the decision. And those are the kinds of decisions and conversations we have with clients who work in that space, because as part of the review, especially when it comes to developing a financial plan, is taking a look at all their assets and all their income sources, those that are receiving now and those that could potentially fuel their future. And taking a look at like what's been granted, what's your vesting schedule, and then we start planning for that. And should they make a change, then we need to make adjustments to the plan. Yeah, and I I, I want to remind you of a story you know very well, Victor, mm-hmm. and that is back in two thousand eight, two thousand nine, when we were working for a certain financial company, mm-hmm. um, and they kept touting to us how how stable their financial situation was. Mm -hmm. And that was all for us to feel more comfortable working where we were working 
and to tell our clients that the situation was stable and there was nothing to worry about in the midst of a financial crisis. And, you know, come to know that in the end, our financial company had to be bought out like many others because they could not stand on their own two feet. And so I just want everyone to know that when you work in a company, the company is going to tell you all of the good things <laughs> and they may omit some of the negative things. And so it's natural to be very bullish about the company that you're working for. Yeah. You are going to get fed that. Where, you know, If I'm on CNN, I am going to listen and be fed the things that CNN feed us. Companies do the same thing media, et cetera. And so it's really important to say, you know, take a bigger picture and think, do you want your compensation and all of your wealth to be in one single company? Right. It's a lot of risk. Now, I know it's a wonderful way to build wealth, and many people here have done that. But now as things get very, very frothy, it's time to say, how comfortable are you if you've built $2 million worth of wealth in your company stock, how comfortable and how will you feel if that drops to $1 million? Mm -hmm. I mean, I think it's really important to ask yourself that question as a concentrated stockholder in a company and say, what will it feel like? Mm -hmm. We don't have very far to go. 2022 is, you know, just two years ago. And I'm certain people did not feel comfortable with the drops. Many companies drop 50%. Mm -hmm. And if we go through that same situation again, how comfortable will you be? You know, hindsight is 2020 always. Right. And so I encourage people now to get proactive. Right. It always makes me nervous, you know, when you see people that are holding a concentrated equity position you know, in any one company, whether they work there or not. And, uh, you know, usually our approach is to take a look at that and say, hey, you've, you really have this very high exposure to the fortunes of this one company. What would be more make more sense to sell, you know, some of that and then diversify, you know, buy into other sectors or buy into other areas so that you can kind of weather the storm. So you're not necessarily resting too much of on a percentage basis of your future fortunes on one company's performance. Because like you said, all you need is, you know, one bad year, one bad product, you know, one, one, you know, international event, hint, pandemic. And then, uh, you know, things take a turn for the worse. Yeah. And sometimes when you weigh out the consequences of paying taxes on gains versus a drop in the stock value, sometimes it is much more beneficial to pay those taxes and move on. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, for those that are have really low cost basis on their stock and really are in a um, hard position, because they want to protect that wealth, but they don't want to pay the taxes. There are strategies, and we are now offering those strategies. Not sure if any of you are familiar with options. Hmm. That's a topic that mm -hmm. I love to oh, talk about. I, that's, a, that's your second favorite topic. <laughs> but too much detail for us to go into in this podcast. But what I can say is you can really ensure your position by taking a complicated option strategy, which we call callers in the industry and uh, protect yourself. So if that is something you like the stock, you want to see it go up more, but you are really afraid of the downside and know you'll be feeling terrible if you see the stock go down for a large, for, for a long period of time, there are things that you can do without having to sell all mm -hmm. of it. Um, and so when we talk about next steps and um, what's going on in the tech world, you know, one of the important things we are trying to do right now is get a survey going and get a pulse on what compensation looks like going forward on restricted stock units. We have had some feedback that it is not as lucrative, they are not getting the amount of shares in refresher grants on an annual basis as they were getting in the past, which means it's more important to protect what you have because you may not be getting that many more. 
Right. And I think the brainchild of actually coming up with the survey was a result of exactly that, is having individual conversations with people who are working in the tech space and doing those annual reviews and, and looking at financial planning and them expressing, hey, there are changes take, taking place in the RSUs. I'm not giving being given as many as before or they're not offering them as much to new employees because of competition or perhaps, you know, the influx. I've been hearing a lot, the influx of AI in, in taking jobs. And so, you know, companies are, are going to gauge, you know, what is the cost of this talent? Do we need to be offering these RSUs? And so based on those conversations, we said we really want to do what most surveys are. I know there is survey fatigue, but this one is very specific to gauge and get a temperature check, kind of a pulse check of where we're at in this industry, whether it be tech or health or any company that offers RSUs, we want this direct feedback. And so this survey that's going out, I don't think it's more than 13, 14 questions in total, and it's exactly that. The idea is for us to collect as much data as possible, and then once we have the data, is to create a white paper that we will share with all you know, those who actually participate in the survey. And we're very likely to do a follow-up podcast to talk about the survey results. Yes. And so we would like our clients who have RSUs, and even if you aren't a client, answer the survey if you get it. Um, We will have a link on this episode as well to the survey. We really want to encourage the most amount of people to fill this out as possible. You can be anonymous. We do not need your name. We just want to know what's going on in your company. And in return for doing this survey, there will be a white paper that comes out that you can see. Knowledge is power. And we believe you need to have that knowledge because there's also a lot of turnover right now. And as there is turnover, and even if you're not working for a company anymore but have RSEs from the past, we still encourage you to answer this this survey. It's very important. Um, And it will be very important to hear the responses as you go out and interview for your next job. You may think that you're going to get more RSUs like you did in the past, but maybe that's not the trend in the future. So um, people who are just signing new contracts or have left old companies, any information you have because you've worked for a company and have had received RSU compensation uh, makes you a viable candidate to fill out this survey. Yeah, and, and don't be concerned. It's not asking for a whole lot of detailed information on you as an individual it really is more, like I said, a, a pulse check on the industry, on the, the compensation packages that are being offered. And I will encourage, you know, if you are in a situation where you could share this because we are going to leverage, you know, social media from the standpoint of promoting the survey, we'll probably try to collect the data for, for a, you, know, a, you know, an extended period of time. And I would anticipate that we would probably uh, compile the results sometime before the end of the year. And then uh, be able to share. It. I'm, I'm hoping in the fall fall time frame. Yes. Um, but as you can see, this is all still something that is under development. This is obviously, you know, surveys, sending surveys is not necessarily our forte. However, the information, the data is important. And for us, it's going to be extremely enlightening. And I think it'd be something that our, our listeners would be interested in learning a little bit more about. Yeah, so the sooner we get that survey out, the sooner you guys respond to the survey, the sooner we can get that information in all of your hands. So really, um, and I want to end it with a term that I'm embarrassed to say I just learned to, this week, and that was fire. You've heard of it? <laughs> yeah, of course. It's been around for a while. I'm, <laughs> I'm embarrassed for you. If this is know. really the first time you've actually heard of it. People are talking behind my back about fire, and that is financially independent and retire early. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I think one of the key ways to do that is through these RSU benefits for those that are, you know, um, lucky enough to have those and to build wealth on them. But it is not enough to have that number on paper in one stock for you to confidently and comfortably retire early, I think you really do have to start diversifying that out. Yeah, and I think you do have to have confidence in the company that's offering them too. And and what I mean by that is the fact is that, you know, it can be extremely enticing, extremely lucrative to be 
you know, interviewing with the company and knowing what the compensation package is and for them to kind of dangle these RSUs in front of you. But then, you know, you want to feel very confident that the company is actually moving in the right direction because both you and I, and this is based on our experience, have lived through the dot-com boom and bust. Mm -hmm. And there was a ton, I would say a ton of paper millionaires in the valley here that ended up with zero. (laughs) You know what I mean? So it's, you know, proceed with caution. Uh, Yeah, definitely proceed with caution and just remember um, in behavioral finance, there are a lot of biases that come up with uh, single company stock ownership and recency bias of, you know, the last stock price or the highest stock price. And um, our minds can play a lot of head games with us. So it's always easier to look at it from the outside Um, And I encourage you all in these wonderful positions to take an outside look at this and make sure you're doing the right thing. That's right. Yeah. So the purpose of this podcast was really to share the fact that we are creating and will be distributing this RSU survey, which there will be a link in the show notes. And we encourage you to not only take it, the survey, if you if you participate or have RSUs, but to share it, share it with your colleagues, because I think the more submissions we have, then the better the data, then the better the results, and then the better information that we'll be able to share down the road. So, I mean, we like to say, what would you do when your money works for you? But I think for those of you that are listening, what will you do when your RSUs work for you? There you go. Exactly. So thanks for listening. And as always, we like to encourage you that if you are enjoying these episodes, If there's a specific subject that you'd like for us to cover, a guest to bring on to the show, please don't hesitate to reach out through email or or contact us on our website. So again, thank you for joining us today. Thank you. Bye. Bye. If you have questions, comments, or suggestions for future shows, please send an email to victor at techgirlfinancial.com or join the conversation on Twitter using the hashtag AskTGF. We also encourage you to follow us on the Tech Girl Financial page on Facebook and connect with us on LinkedIn. Securities offered through registered representatives of Cambridge Investment Research, Inc., a broker-dealer member FINRA, SIPC. Investment advisory services offered through Cambridge Investment Research Advisors, a registered investment advisor. Tech Girl Financial and Cambridge Investment Research, Inc. are not affiliated companies. Discussions in the show should not be construed as specific recommendations or investment advice. Always consult with your investment professional before making important investment decisions.